Hello friends, welcome back to another uh, tutorial of Yosemite Topics. This is again a continuation of my clathrin video. Now I'm going to do an overall movement from the rough ER to the inside the ER, to the Golgi, to the lysosomes, kind of all together in one, one go, one flow of a movement of particles, a movement of enzymes, or movement of proteins. So. Okay, so the question can come like this as, you know, whenever we have to study cell, it, you know, we always overlook thinking what kind of questions can come from rough endoplasmic reticulum or smooth endoplasmic reticulum, we all know about it, but this is a particular type of question that can come which can get us stumped. So let's talk about it. So they can give you a, a, a picture of an electron, electron microscope uh, of, of a rough endoplasmic reticulum and you have to be able to recognize that they are rough endoplasmic reticulum because um, they're going to have cisternae and they're going to have little dots outside the rough endoplasmic reticulum which are the ribosomes. So first is looking at the picture of the electron dense substance and recognizing that that is rough endoplasmic reticulum. Let me, let me see if I can find a picture like that. Okay, so this is a specific example of rough endoplasmic reticulum. We can see the little ribosome sitting outside the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So recognizing this is very important. It can be a little more subtle than this in an electron dense microscopy picture, so be aware of that. All right, so now that we recognize rough endoplasmic reticulum, let's talk about the movement. So when a protein is being made on the cytoplasmic side of a ribosome on the rough endoplasmic reticulum, reticulum or um, on the ribosomes of rough ER, um, they are going to have something called N-terminal hydrophobic signal sequence. Okay, so this is a term that needs to be memorized. So it's going to be N-terminal hydrophobic and terminal hydrophobic signal sequence. Okay, it's going to have N terminal hydrophobic signal sequence. So this is going to be attached, attached to the protein that is being made on the ribosome of rough ER. On the, on the cytoplasmic side. Okay, so the N terminal hydrophobic signal sequence is going to be attached to the protein that is being made on the ribosomes of the rough ER on the cytoplasmic side. Now, from the cytoplasmic side, this protein needs to enter the inside the inside the rough ER for post. Transition, translational modification. Okay, so this is going to, okay, so if this is number one, let's say. After this, it's going to have post translational modification. And for post translational modification, the N terminal hydrophobic signal sequence is very important because that is like the key or the the access pass inside the rough endoplasmic reticulum of those proteins that are being made in the ribosomes. If they don't have inter terminal hydrophobic signal sequence, they will not be entered. They will not be able to enter the rough endoplasmic reticulum and they're not going to have post translational modification and they're going to be useless. They're not going to be recognized by any of the vesicles inside the cell or wherever this protein needs to go. So after post uh, um, Post-translational modification, okay, so one more time I want to kind of throw in here is this N-terminal hydrophobic signal sequence is the signal recognition particle, okay? So N-terminal is the, this is the signal recognition. It's a signal recognition particle. So once it enters the rough endoplasmic reticulum, it's going to go through, um, go through some post-translational modification. Now that substance is going to, you know, let's say 
the enzyme that is being made or the protein that is being made in the ribosome is actually lysosomal enzymes which is let's say in this this particular case let's say they're lysosomal enzymes and they have to end up in lysosomes to do their function so um so let's just say that so from after the post translational uh, modification these lysosomal enzymes needs to go to golgi and from golgi they're going to go to lysosomes okay so I talked about it a little bit. Of, this is where the clathrin coated pits comes in. Uh, clathrin coated pits is going to help uh, movement from the Golgi to the lysosome. And I made, an, my, made a separate video on that. So if you are interested, please take a look at that. It's very important. So, okay, so let's say after post translational modification in the rough endoplasmic reticulum, the particles, particles are going to move, or the proteins, in this case, the cytosomal enzymes is going to move to Golgi. Okay, inside Golgi, so this is what happens in Golgi. Okay, inside Golgi, they they're going to have uh, a phosphorylation of these enzymes. Okay. Or it's called phosphotransferase activity. Okay, inside Golgi, they're going to have phosphotrans. Sorry about that. Phosphotransferase activity happens where um, they're going to put phosphates onto the enzymes. Okay, this is very very important. This is this is where a clinical clinical scenario comes in this is where the eye cell disease is important because when this phosphorylation by phosphotransferase activity a phosphotransferase enzyme does not happen the mannose residues kind of float around in the cell and we have uh, we don't have we, we don't have proper uh, we don't have proper. I don't know why this is doing this. We don't have proper um, lysosomal activity because there is no because there is no lysosomal enzymes because this phosphotransferase activity is inhibited. So none of the enzymes that's being made is getting to the lysosomes and that's when we have you know eye cell disease and all the features that comes with eye cell disease so I'm just kind of putting everything together kind of having a dynamic uh, approach to learning all these things and how they can come into come into different places places so let's say the phosphotransfer activity was fine okay the next is movement from so if any of these steps from ribosomes to inside RER if that is inhibited by uh, what, what's the term I, I, I mentioned it was N-terminal hydrophobic signal sequence N-terminal hydrophobic signal sequence is inhibited it's not going to happen so if post translational modification doesn't happen inside ribosomes and if there is no signal recognition particle then um, the post transition modification is not going to happen so if that's inhibited the whole process is gone so from the ER to the Golgi, uh, if that process does not happen with, oh, that is something I missed saying here. So from ER to Golgi, we're going to have movement, movement by COPS. So non-coated uh, non substances, which is going to move these, uh, these enzymes from the Golgi, from the ER to the Golgi. Okay, so if that is inhibited, the process is, you know, is not valid. And inside Golgi, we're going to have phosphotransferase activity. If that is not working, we're going to have eye cell disease. And from Golgi to a lysosome, we're going to have clathrin coated receptor, um, clathrin coated mediated uh, sorting of enzymes lysosomal enzyme all right so if that is inhibited it's not going to happen either so there's so many steps that comes between ribosomes to the golgi and if any of this process is inhibited we're not we're not going to have a proper
protein. So now let's say all these processes are well done and we have no problem. The next is inside lysosome. What happens inside lysosome? Uh, there's two proteins. One is protease, which breaks down proteins. and glycosidase which breaks down sugar okay and, under, and knowing these uh, enzymes protease and glycosidase you can't just come up with a name these are specific names for lysosomal enzymes it's very very important all right so that's it that's all the movement from ribosome to the lysosome and yeah this these these topics can be a pain um so learning them well and learning them once is very very important so i think this is our time anyways so these notes are going to be on my blog and i'll see you guys on my next video bye for now